Hey guys, what's up? John from flyatmindcalpha.com and today we're going to be going over fog. So all the different types of fog there are, the things that you're going to have to know for your FAA written exam, and what you should know for your FAA check ride and flying around as a pilot. So there's six main types of fog, and those six types are what we're going to focus on for the purposes of your FA written and your check ride. So the first one is going to be radiation fog. So radiation fog ultimately is something that's going to be common on calm, clear nights. It's as the ground gets warm during the day from the sun, it's eventually going to get cold when the sun goes down, and it radiates off that heat rather quickly. It actually cools down fairly quickly, and the ground can cool down a lot quicker than the air around it. That's how we get those temperature inversions at night. Now, when the air near the surface has some moisture in it, it also gets cooled down by that cool ground overnight. And typically later in the evening and into the morning, you'll start to see some fog forming, and that is radiation fog. It's radiation fog because the ground is radiating heat away from it. That makes the ground cool. It cools the air around it. It condenses the moisture in the air around it into fog and thus you see some fog. Now the good news is if you wake up and you see this in the morning and you really want to go fly, that a light wind of five knots or more will typically make the fog lift and dissipate. Um, it may first actually become a little worse, but as that wind increases to 10, 15 knots and so on, it really blows it all out of there and just all goes away. It can sometimes first lift into low stratus clouds, but it ultimately just gets all blown away with the stronger winds. Next type we have is advection fog. So what you need to remember here is that convection moves up and down. So convective currents like heating for thunderstorms, that moves up and down, updrafts and downdrafts. Advection is something that moves sideways. So advection fog occurs when warm moist air comes into contact with the ocean's cool surface or water's cool surface. So when you have warm moist air coming off the land and hitting the ocean or hitting water, it will then cool that air and of course condense the moisture in that air into visible moisture making fog. Now you may think well this is only like a problem for boaters because this is going to occur over the water but a little light breeze or some warming in the land can actually draw the fog back in off the water onto land and totally destroy visibility in all those coastal airports and places like that. So generally a wind of about 15 knots or more will cause this fog to lift into low stratus clouds which is kind of bad for VFR flying too. But ultimately, this fog will come back in off the water and really mess up your visibility on the ground. Always realize that if you're flying at the time that this fog moves back in, or any fog moves in for that matter, you may be able to visibly see down through it. So you may actually look down and see this thin layer of fog. It's only 5, 10, 15 feet thick. And actually see the numbers on the runway, see the runway markings, see all the lights and buildings down below. And just be like, oh, it's very little fog you can see ver vertically right down into it. The trouble is, as you come into land, you can't see horizontally through it. So as you descend into it to land, you're looking forward down the runway, everything will disappear and you'll basically be in a cloud. And that's a really, really bad thing. So be very cautious just because you can see through the fog down to the ground. That doesn't mean you're gonna be able to see through it horizontally when you're trying to land and taxi around through it and things like that. Our next type of fog, is upslope fog. So upslope fog is basically fog that forms when it gets pushed up a mountain. So when you have warm moist air that has a little bit of wind behind it or some sort of uh, pushing force that slides it up the slope of a mountain, it moves up in altitude, it cools down, and it condenses into fog. This is most commonly going to be found out uh, in the Rocky Mountains in the winter and spring out in the western United States, but it really can happen anywhere where you have a hill with some wind and some moist air gets pushed up and forms upslope fog. Next type of fog is precipitation induced fog. So this is sort of an easier type of fog to imagine. Think when you have warm rain that falls down into cooler air, well it makes it kind of steamy and misty and that moisture forms into a nice thick layer of fog. This will usually happen when you have warm fronts or very slow moving cold fronts. So when you have that warm uh, rain falling from above into cooler air down below, it makes that steamy, foggy, misty kind of mess. And uh, it can hang around for quite a while, especially when uh, fronts aren't fast moving and this is caused by something like a warm front, then this precipitation induced fog can persist for quite some time. Next, we've got my personal favorite, which is ice fog. Ice fog 
is just really, really pretty to look at. It's not going to likely to be found in the lower 48, except for maybe some place where it's really, really cold up in Montana, North Dakota, places like that, but certainly common up in Alaska. So it's really just radiation fog that forms when temperatures are below negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it's very, very, very cold outside. So this fog is made purely of ice crystals rather than of actual liquid water. And it's really beautiful to see. Trouble is, because it's ice crystals, they're very shiny and reflective, and it can become very blinding to look at it with the sun's reflection on it. Also, when the temperature's not quite negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe it's a little warmer and it's not totally frozen, this fog can start to stick to other surfaces, and it makes these really, really pretty pictures here with ice forming on trees and things like that and cars. Trouble is, this can also form your airplane very, very quickly, so be cautious of that the colder it gets the less likely it is that this type of fog is going to stick to anything because it's so frozen there's really no liquid moisture left at negative 25 degrees fahrenheit or below lastly guys we have steam fog so steam fog is also pretty cool it's something pretty common you i'm sure you've seen it before it's ultimately when you're looking at like a warm lake or a warm body of water on a cooler morning you'll see steam fog forming because you have that cooler air moving over that warmer lake so there's going to be some natural evaporation happening from that lake or body of water, ocean, whatever it is. And as that cold dryer moves over the warm body of water, it's going to become saturated with the moisture evaporating from the warm water. And as that air becomes saturated, the moisture condenses into visible moisture and we see the steam fog forming as we do here. Hopefully you guys found that helpful and made some sense of this very foggy topic here. If you like that, give us a thumbs up on our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, keep all our latest videos. This is part of the weather section of our online private pilot ground school that is totally free at flyatmikehealth.com. So go ahead and sign up for it. Check it out. It is an awesome online resource for private pilots or any pilot for that matter, working towards a rating or just looking to brush up your pilot knowledge skills. Please do check out our Patreon page. Support us on Patreon. It really helps keep us a totally free online resource for everyone. And as always, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We will see y'all next time. <laughs>